no fancy opening scene this time, no? Look, those little funny films are great and all, but things are getting a bit serious now and I'm going to need your full attention. Besides, they actually take a long time to put together and I want to focus more on the information for the time being. But don't worry, you'll see these cinematic intros make a return in future videos, even better than before. Maybe less often, but I promise they'll be worth the wait. This means I'll have more time to work on the educational side of the videos and get you Egypt's lucid dreaming as quickly as possible, all right? All right, yeah, that's, that's fair, that's fair, yeah, yeah. So before we get into this particular technique, I should probably explain how wild induction works. All techniques for wake initiated lucid dreaming employ some kind of anchor, much like a ship in the ocean, an anchor is what keeps you from drifting off as you attempt to fall asleep consciously. Without it, we would be taken away by the current off to slumberland. An anchor can be anything at all that provides you with some kind of sensory input, such as music or a ticking clock, an aroma, a physical action or stimuli, visualizing a scene, counting numbers in your head or focusing on your breathing. This is why there are so many different wild techniques out there, but they all rely on the same basic principle of the anchor. Let me know in the comments if you practice wild and what anchors you prefer. So back to this analogy of the boat and the anchor. Now, the boat is you. The rope between you and your anchor is your awareness. You don't want to focus too intensely on your anchor, but if you find yourself drifting off, you also need to reel yourself back in. Depending on your anchor, the transition into the dream may not be clear. Some anchors effectively distract you from the moment the dream is formed. Therefore, a reality test is recommended to confirm your lucidity in the dream or you may think that you have failed and fall back to sleep. This is why I like to use hypnagogia as my anchor. Hypnagogia, hypnagogia, hip... <coughs> I don't know. Anyway, this is the transitional state of consciousness between wakefulness and sleep and in it, you can encounter a whole variety of visual, auditory, and tactile hallucinations. For all intents and purposes, you get the raw, unabridged experience as you enter the dream state, and there is usually no question as to when you have crossed over. Not to be confused with sleep paralysis, which is a different experience in many ways, but we'll talk about that perhaps in another video. The idea of hypnagogia can still be intimidating or difficult for beginners to comprehend. Sometime in the near future, I will release videos recreating the hypnagogic experience so you'll have a clearer idea of what you're looking for and what to expect. This has never been done before at the level of detail that I'm planning, so you won't want to miss it. It's a big undertaking with a lot of technical elements I still have to figure out, so it might take some time to put it all together. But if you subscribe now and turn on the old notifications, you'll see when it's ready. And sure, it costs nothing to click a few buttons. Like. For now though, I've prepared the following guide called the Chain of Thought to help visualize less literally and more figuratively how to identify and instigate hypnagogic experiences and use them to transition into a lucid dream with full awareness. First of all, this isn't a new technique. Stephen LeBerge outlined the hypnagogic imagery technique in his book 30 years ago. Even Charles Dickens was familiar with hypnagogia and he wrote about it in his famous novel Oliver Twist. There is a drowsy state between sleeping and waking when you dream more in five minutes with your eyes half open and yourself half conscious of everything that is passing around you than you would in five nights with your eyes fast closed and your senses wrapped in perfect unconsciousness. Beautiful. 
but I think modern lucid dreamers, with all the new ILD techniques at their disposal, tend to overlook some of the fundamentals. Certainly many newcomers don't know how to even reach the point of hypnagogia, which is something I think I've cracked here. The inspiration for this particular wild tutorial actually came to me in a similar hypnagogic state two years ago. I wrote it down and I showed it to very few people over the years, tweaking it and waiting for the right place to really get it out there and I think this channel is it. So when you get to the end of this video, if you found it helpful or insightful, please really consider liking and even sharing so that together we can make Wake Initiated Lucid Dreams more accessible for everyone today. Now, obviously, this is a wild induction technique, so you'll need to perform this during a wake back to bed or an awakening later in the night or early morning, so that you'll be able to directly enter REM sleep. I've already made a video with more information about sleep interruption and identifying REM periods. It's also worth noting that your body position is not really that important for this technique, as long as you're comfortable and relaxed. Just imagine you are a big sack of spuds sinking down into the mattress and you'll be grand. We'll begin by thinking of your normal conscious day-to-day -day thoughts as a big heavy chain that you're holding onto. When you're going to bed, these thoughts weigh you down and are difficult to get past. They could embody some anxiety you're feeling like something you forgot to do that day or something you need to do tomorrow. An interesting video you just watched or maybe something you are anticipating like a lucid dream. These are the things that keep you up at night and also during a wake back to bed. Now, the hardest part is transitioning away from this heavy chain. I'll do my best to explain how I've managed to achieve this, but there are many meditation practices that you can learn yourself and incorporate into your method. So what I do is I try not to fight these thoughts, but I let them all come and go until there's nothing left to think about, which leaves an empty space to be filled unconsciously by these lighter, free-flowing daydreams. I actually figured out how to enter this daydream state by myself and only afterwards I learned the term liminal dreaming, which I think was coined by author Jennifer Dumpert, who has a good YouTube video that sums up the whole thing pretty well. And she has a book, if you really want to get into it. Anyway, when I heard her describe this liminal dreaming practice, I was like, hey, that sounds exactly like what I do to induce wilds. So the best way I can describe it is, it's as if your dreaming mind takes charge. You will experience this state of consciousness more easily in the foggy periods of awakening and drifting off to sleep. Not to be confused with hypnagogic and hypnopompic imagery. These dreamy thoughts are still only thoughts at this point. Like daydreams, they have no accompanying physical sensations. You can kind of visualize them, but merely in the mind's eye. They don't stimulate the brain in the same way as hypnagogic hallucinations or dreams would yet, but they are a crucial stepping stone for getting there. In this state, your thoughts are less grounded than usual, and you start to imagine all sorts of abstract stuff, like crazy inventions, bizarre animals, people you've never seen before, places you've never been to, and words or sentences that don't make sense. Maybe even a creative solution to a problem you've been having. In fact, people like Albert Einstein and Salvador Dali, do you know them, have used liminal dreaming to seek inspiration for their own work. So what you want to do now is continue to let these lighter thoughts progress naturally and do their thing. Imagine the chain in your hand is now thin and delicate, like a chain you would find in exquisite jewellery. You will feel that they pass or flow through much more easily, evolving very quickly from one idea to another. Simply observe and enjoy these thoughts, forget about your worries and just live in the daydream your mind is creating. Now, at this point, if you wanted to, you could just leave it at that, 
become lost in the fantasy world and drift off into unconsciousness. That's the best thing about this versatile technique. You can also use it to fall asleep very quickly if it's something you're having trouble with. Ever since I learned how to replace the heavy thoughts with the daydreams, I've experienced less insomnia and restless nights. However, if your end goal is achieving a lucid dream, then you have to anchor yourself somehow. As long as you don't let the heavier external thoughts back in, it should be safe to, every so often, gently tighten your grip on the chain and take a moment to examine the daydream. Realize what it is, become lucid essentially. Notice those cogs and wheels in the strange machine your mind just invented. Listen to what people are saying and if it makes sense. What are the weird costumes they are wearing? If you were doing it right, then you should be completely surprised by what your mind has created of its own accord and you're not even dreaming yet. You are still very much awake and aware of your surroundings at this time. Release your grip again and allow the chain to continue on its path, but keep checking back with it every so often. Eventually, you will begin to notice new sensations somewhere along the chain. The onset of a dream will begin to stimulate your senses and cause visual, auditory or tactile hallucinations. This is the hypnagogic phenomenon I've been alluding to. These are distinguishable from the daydream because it might actually feel like a voice is reverberating through the room or you might begin to see more three-dimensional imagery in the backs of your eyelids. You might even feel like you are falling, slipping or parts of your body are contorting by themselves. This is where it can get tricky and only practice will make perfect but getting to this point I think is the hardest part for beginners. The final stage is more of a balancing act between passively observing the daydream as you were before and actively injecting small amounts of momentary awareness as more of these physical elements appear. Think of it as the most delicate part of the chain and easily broken if grabbed too tight. Eventually one of the passing three dimensional fragments will become stable enough for you to grab it and interact with it. At this point you may try to visualize the rest of the dream to your liking, or alternatively allow it to form by itself and see where it takes you. Now, I strongly believe that this metaphorical gripping of the chain best represents the different degrees of conscious involvement required while attempting to induce a wild, since the liminal and hypnagogic states can be difficult to navigate if you haven't experienced them before. But remember, it's still considered an advanced method, so don't expect results immediately. Try to practice achieving a quiet mind first, then get accustomed to the liminal dream state. Eventually, if you are in the right stage of your sleep cycle, the hypnagogia will come, and the more comfortable you become with that, then the easier it will be to stay relaxed through the whole transition into the lucid dream. So build your experience one step at a time and be patient. This can be a very reliable technique when you know how to do it and it's absolutely worth the effort to learn if you are any bit serious about lucid dreaming and understanding consciousness. I still recommend that beginners follow the usual steps like recall and reality testing and keep working towards achieving a dream initiated lucid dream as well because it will give you a feel for lucid dreaming if you've never had any but also keep your options open and keep you focused on your goals. So that's the technique folks, give it a try some morning and let me know how it goes. Whether you have some interesting daydreams, trippy hypnagogic hallucinations or successfully transition into a lucid dream, I'd like to hear about it below. And any questions or anything at all, you know what to do. Well, I think all that's left to say now is like, subscribe, subscribe. click the bell. You've all been great. Thank you very much. Good night.